how the technology actually works and keeps people safe. Yeah, thanks for having us, Emily. Yeah, we had to look at how to bring back uh, about 800 different entrepreneurs and technologists that are based at New Lab. But as you mentioned, we've been working on a range of essential projects regarding ventilators and face shields, other forms of PPE. And so that was a community of about 75 people that we needed to bring back to the New Lab facility, um, which is labs and equipment they need on a daily basis. And so we had to build the right protocol to do so in a safe and responsible manner. And so first there was operational pieces like distancing and making sure seats were spread apart and conference rooms had lower maximum occupancy. But the technology piece was where it got interesting, as you mentioned. We worked with Strong Arm Technologies, one of the New Lab companies, one of the 150 companies based here at New Lab. And they've developed a wearable sensor that helps both with, uh, at the moment, kind of social distancing feedback. So it provides haptic feedback, vibrations, and lights to tell you if you're coming within a certain distance of another person within the workplace but also allows some pretty helpful contact tracing, historically looking back at an employee's movement in the space if they do become ill, to identify not only where they went that would require additional deep cleaning, but also who they interacted with so that you can quarantine not only the first person with symptoms, but also the people who interacted with that person during their time. So how effective has it actually been in practical use? Well, so far, it's a range of different protocols that have all come together to be a very effective return-to-work strategy for us. Um, they fill out questionnaires before they arrive. Then they have their temperature taken upon arrival with a contactless thermometer. Then they, um, then they uh, get pick up one of these sensors and wear it just throughout the time while they're in the building. And so it's helped us understand a range of different things, like choke points of where people are, are actually congregating in groups where we need to make a better operational or footprint plan to ensure the crowds don't gather. Um, but also, we've been able to see which of the 75 people are most at risk, who is not maintaining social distancing, who is interacting with people at close distances more often, so that we don't have to go and, and kind of work with everyone in that population, but can identify the people who are the most at risk of contaminating or passing on COVID-19. Now, how could this technology, you know, if it indeed is, is effective, how, how could this be deployed? I mean, I imagine you could, it could be used in, in, in warehouses and, and, you know, all different kinds of, of scenarios to sort of keep workers in check. I mean, what is the vision for how this rolls out? That's exactly right. Uh, we're certainly not doing this for profit. This is costing us money to operate, to bring on EMT staff. But what we're trying to do is learn how we could educate and inform other businesses that have a similar construct to New Lab. New Lab's an 84,000-square-foot building in the Brooklyn Navy Yard, has a lot of similarities to workplaces, but also factories uh, and in kind of the industrial athletes' um, locations that you mentioned. And so we're trying to gather as many insights from this pilot with a small community, a small employee base, so that we can help other New York State and nationwide businesses return in a, self, uh, in a safe and, and healthy manner. Now, uh, Scott, earlier, Sean, earlier in the show, I was speaking with Dr. David Weiner of Inovio, a company that's working on its own COVID-19 vaccine candidate, and, and we got cut off just as he was about to say when he believes a vaccine will be uh, achieved and more widely in use. He said he believes uh, he just wrote in that he believes before the end of the year we'll see emergency use cases of a vaccine for people like frontline health providers, but it's going to be some time beyond that before we see a vaccine available to the general population. As somebody who runs a company and has employees coming into work, um, do you think that, uh, it, you know, how do you de determine whether or not it's really and truly safe, even if you have this technology available without a vaccine, safe to have your workers coming into the office when there's so much uncertainty about how the disease is, is still transmit it and, and why it affects some people worse than others? Yeah, I think that's a great question. We certainly have focused only on the essential workers related to the tasks that you referenced, the building ventilators and face shields and different efforts that are deemed essential by the state. Outside of that, we continue to follow for the remaining population of the community, the CDC guidelines, city and state regulations, those key seven data points that New York City is tracking towards. So we, we will act just like any employer when it comes to the larger population. But we had to figure out a way to bring people back in a, in a healthy and responsible manner 
purely for those working on essential tasks in regards to the fight against COVID-19. And so that's why we put our, our best step forward using the technologists in our community to come up with a combination of operational procedures and technological so solutions like strong arm technologies product um, to, to bring people back in that manner.